Okay, so last time we spoke, we um, you had joined the joined up the navy um, as as one of their very first colourblind <laughs> auto electricians. So I'm looking forward to hearing how that went. Air, um, aircraft, not auto. Aircraft. Oh, aircraft. Okay. They had planes back then. Yes, driven by elastic. Oh right, yes, yeah. <laughs> So, um, I know that there was a bit that went on between times, but let's just talk about the Navy. So you signed up, how long was it before they, you know, pulled your house in for training or whatever it is you, you did? And... Well, but they basically, I, I, I joined up, as you know, um, we all went for this medical, and um, I wanted to join Royal Marines. Um, but when I'm standing there naked with all these other fellas and they called the Marine and I went over there and then he had a look at me and he says, can't do the Marines because you're colourblind. And I said, no. Oh. He said, but we can give you the Navy. So I said, well, all right. I mean, you're standing there naked. You, you, you don't want to sort of sob about that. So I said, all right, I'll take the Navy. I said, but, but not for the 12 years. I was going to sign on for 12 for, for the Marines. So I said, no, not for the, you know, but I'll do the seven and five. And that meant you do seven years with the colours and five years with paid, paid reserve. To be, to be fair, you wasn't in the best bargaining position standing there. Well, that's it. If stand, I mean, let's be fair. I, I had no intention of joining the, the Navy or anything mm. like it. So then, then it wasn't long after that. We, we, well, I was called up. I can't remember how long, but it, I know it wasn't very long. And um, I so, so, how old were you then? Seventeen and a half. Seventeen and a half. So that's right. You had to do half a year free. So yeah. where, where did you go? Where was the first place you went? We went to Al Sega, up in Stoke on Trent. Um, I, I, actually, I, I, the, the thing I, I do remember is we sort of met in, in London there somewhere, and, and I remember we charging across the uh, railway carrier thing, uh, railways um, in, 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 the, in the station. And I remember we was all happy and laughing and joking, and we all charging across this to get to the platform um, and we got on the platform and anyway when we got the train and that's when the, the, everybody sort of was asking who, who each other's was and they asked me who I was and of course I said Arnold Waters and they said can't call you Arnold I mean it's you know it was too posh oh really oh god yeah oh, you know. did, you, um, did this, you tell them you was from the slums <laughs> <laughs> no. and I just so they said, I'll tell you what, we'll call you Andy. Oh, so that's how you became Andy? And that's how I became Andy, Andy Waters. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so we, we went to Al Sega um, and we got two barrels of oxygen knocked out of us because uh, after the war, the Air Force and the Army went forward, you know, and they learned that you treat people different than that. But in the Navy, we reverted back to the bloody rope in, ropes in, bloody nonsense. Mm. And, uh, oh yeah, we, 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 we really went through it. And actually, the PO that was in charge of us, Bridges, Petty Officer Bridges, he in fact was um, a prisoner of war from the Japs during the war. He got, he got sunk in one of the destroyers. So he, he ended up in jam prison camp for, for four or five years or four years, whatever it was. Bloody hell. And cause That's rough. When he came back, you can imagine he was a, a bit of a twisted man, eh? And uh, he certainly put us through it, yeah. But we survived it. It was, it, it was um, you know, it didn't, didn't do us any harm. So this was training. Um, so how long was you was you there at training? I, th I think we were there... Uh, uh, the initial, that part one training was about six weeks, I think. Right. And and in that time we, because it, 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 it was sort of stoked up, up in the potteries there was, there, there's these um, 
big lagoons, big lakes, uh, and I think what they are is where they mines used to be the coal mines and then all that ground's all sunk down now you know yeah and, and of course it leaves a big lake okay and um it was there that we uh, we did all our boat training yeah oh, okay that's where we used to go out and learn how to row a boat yeah so that, that was I, I quite enjoyed that of course so where did you go once you finished training did you, you know, well, straight onto a boat and oh god no right and, and it was there that they, um, and then they, that, that was when they said, right, you, you, I was an electrician, but then they divided us up whilst we were there into electricians, aircraft electricians, radio mechs, and air radio mechs, mechanics. And because I was put in the aircraft electrician bracket. You know, colour blind and all, and um, <coughs> we went off to to Ariel, HMS Ariel, in, in Warrington, you know, up there. and that's where we did our part one training. As a, I went up there as what they call a an EMA, electrical EMA, electric, electrician's mate, air. So uh, if you sort of leave across a bit, when we was out in Korea. Um, we all had our own aircraft to look after, you know. Oh, no. Uh, and, uh, well, you see, this is it. I told you not to laugh. I suppose the pilots said, oh, Frank, I've been assigned one of Andy's ones. Well, I, I tell you, I, I, I worked. <coughs> and I did lose uh, quite a number of air aircraft that I'd worked on. Yeah, it's serious. And, and uh, it wasn't, um, you, you know, you, you think, God, did I, what did I do wrong, you know? Yeah. And of course, one one of the tricks I, t I told you a long, long time ago. I know we're leaping ahead, but what what we were also doing it, it, it was what they call rate of rocket assisted takeoff. From, oh yeah. And so, what what you did, um, you checked all these rockets on on this aeroplane, and because I being I was the leading hand at that, that stage, and. Um, and I, you, I was in charge, yeah, you know, and, and you used to stick one of your blokes in the cockpit with his hands up here, because you didn't want to touch nothing. And you was with your mega and they checking these rockets, and uh, and then you got, got it all right, and then you, you made sure everything's all right, and then you plug them in, and so it goes all right, and then he gets out, and of course you sign what they call a 700, it's a logbook of, of the aeroplane, so you sign that. I mean, he signed it, and I signed it as a supervisor, you see. And um, this, this particular time, uh, I'm watching it, and, and this airplane revs up, and away it goes. And he does. He just goes up and drops up. <laughs> he drops up to the bloody front. <laughs> and I got a photo of it. And of course, we look over, and, and there's this plane sinking slowly in the west. And, Robs the pilot, see, and I thought, I sod it, you know, I'd rather the pilot went down in case it was my fault, you know, did, did, I, put, did I put that fuse back in, did it? Oh. Anyway, uh, what it turned out to be was that, the, it, see, we had these sea fuel, well, we had sea furies, and they were sort of Mark 1 and Mark 2, see, and it, in one particular type of, of fury, the, the throttle, what, what they pushed forward, and they got a, a, a push there, you see. Well, it, in some furies, that 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 was the fire in the rocket, and or in the others, so that was the their uh, communication. Oh, how do you know? But then, what in the others, the, the the rocket firing button was on the in front and on, on the board, and they put their finger forward. So when they pushed the throttle forward and got full revs. That, that finger then pushed the button. Right. Well, my chummy that went over the arse and he was pushing, <laughs> pushing like buggery, and all he was doing was pushing his radio, radio button. Eh? So it was pilot error, not not Andy. Yeah, well, that was good. Not Andy's elect so, special electrics. God, it was all, what, a, what a relief! And then, of course, an, an, another time now, when we're checking, doing this bloody radio talk takeoff again. You know, we have to go through all this paraphernalia about chummy, oh, I have his hands up here because I don't want him to touch nothing whilst I'm under the 
doing these bloody rockets <laughs> and we were going to get it all done. And we're, we're sitting there because the electrical officer decides that he come on the flight deck to watch all this. No, this one, no, it's that, it's that, it's that, it's that. and away he goes and you don't. <laughs> Nothing happens. But he just manages to stop, you know, just, <laughs> just before he goes over the arse to, and cause the moment, and you should have seen it. I mean, I, I rushed over, I got, of course, you know, oh, what have I done this time? <laughs> but I didn't beat the electrical officer. He was over there quicker than I was. <laughs> and, and the pilot said that he was pushing, he forgot to switch it on. Oh, okay. But uh, switch on the main switch, yeah. So it was, uh, you know, it used to make you wonder, because, and then because we, uh, I lost a few, which I did, we used to do minor in, uh, inspections on them, and daily inspections and all this rubbish, and quite a, f a few kites that I'd worked on uh, didn't come back, you know, because we lost them. Um, I mean, we lost about 30 or 40 airplanes, sure. all, all told. Presumably uh, shot down. Oh, yeah, well, we hope so, eh? <laughs> and, um, and, and those that crashed on deck, of course, and, and right. crashed to, uh, you know, went over the side and things like this that. This is on landing and yeah. stuff, yeah. And we lost about 20 pilots, all told. It's yeah. true. Um, and actually, one, <coughs> one of our pilots, a young fella, he was, he was quite a nice kid, he, he was, a, I think he was a midshipman or something. But he was the son of the editor of the Hong Kong Herald, you know. Mm -hmm. So when we were in Hong Kong, you know, and uh, he, he was a real boy. And he used to come with his, through the hangar at nights when we was working, because we used to work, uh, well, I, I'd, I'd sort of been two or three days work, work, work getting these bloody aircraft serviceable and, and that. And um, he used to come through the hangar to check up on his aeroplane and all this. And we lost him. He, he, he apparently, um, our blokes used to do a lot of the dive bombing in, in the Furies. And another trick they used to do, they could throw bombs up railway tunnels. Okay. And so they would go down and, and chuck a bomb. Our, our squadron leader used to do that. And they throw this bomb up the, t up the tunnel, and uh, it was a delayed action bomb. Yeah. And it would go off, hoping that when the troop train went through, it would blow up. You know. And the mighty Mo, the Missouri, the the, the battleship, she she was out there with us, and of course she, she would um, tell us if this bomb had gone off during the night. You know, with, with all the radar gear and all that rubbish. Yeah. And. Another thing they did, they did the dive bombing as well. And this young boy was sort of number two with, with, the, with the governor. And he went in and dropped his bomb because Chummy come down as number two and he was too close. And so when he went away, he caught the blast of the bomb. Oh, and he, right. just, and he went in, yeah. So he didn't come back. There's another one we lost. Mm. Yeah. And we could hear him on, on the flight deck. You know, when I was flight deck crew, you, you had the tunnel out there and you could hear, hear the pilots talking. And oh, okay. You know, it, was, it was quite good. So just, okay, that's all really exciting stuff and I wanted to hear more of it, but sort of, just sort of get this in order a bit. So, you've, so back, you've, you've got, gone back to training. Yeah. Uh, uh, when did you get to go? Where, what was your first boat? What was what was that all about? Boats, boats. Well, I don't know. Um, paddle I, steamers. I or only had red one ship. A ship, sorry. All right. Well, that's as I told you. I went to El Sega uh, first off, yeah. and that was when they had two. We got two barrels of what's it knocked out of us, and then we did divided up into what we these things we were going to be. And then I went to the HMS Aerial, which is um, in Warrington, for uh, this electrician's and my second class course, right? Right. And then from there, um, I went to another, another course, and I went to Browncoat for a, 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 another part of the electrical thing. And um, then basically, I was then stationed down in Cornwall oh, okay. on HMS Vulture in Padstow. Right. 
And at Padstow, I languished, or languished, whichever you like to look at it, three years there. Mm -hmm. and, and there. And in that time, I'd put in for a foreign draft and nobody wanted to know. And I'd met your mum. Yeah. I'd got married. Okay. Uh, and I, I, I got to be, uh, I do. You got an EMA, electrician's mate, second, then I was an electrician's mate, first class. Then I was a leading, acting leading electrician's mate. And then I got to be a leading electrician's mate. That was hooked. Okay, so I got, I, got, I got to ask, how did you get on if you're colour blind? What what sort of what colours do you get mixed up? I, I got no idea. Uh, <laughs> red and green, I think that is. But I got no idea. The only reason I know I'm, I'm actually colour blind, uh, well, I, I knew it was because I couldn't get. I did apply for a job on the railway, uh, going way back, and they said they shut me out because I was colour blind. Mm -hmm. um, but they showed little pin lights up, you know, and and I saw the red and green and I. Anyway, when I was coming back from Korea, we all had to have a big, big medical, you yeah. know, because apparently most of our blokes had VD and whatever, and whilst we were out there, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, no, I, I was a good boy. Went into brothels, I saw what happened in brothels and things like that, and I never indulged, and I promise you now. I was too scared, actually. I didn't want to cut your dose and bring it back to your mum. Anyway, that's beside the point. When we came back, we all had this medical, and it was there that it was on board ship, you know, and the old medical officers gave me this book, and it's a book, and it's a round rings in it, and there's all colours in this book, you know, and, and you look at it, and you can see a number. All right. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm so seeing the test like that. He, he said, uh, <clears throat> "What's that?" And I told him, and I said, "No, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And the, no, nothing there." So he turns to the back of the book and it turns over. He said, "What's that?" Oh, yeah, that's number twelve and all this stuff. I said, "Ah," he said, "You're colour blind." He says, "I've never met a colour blind bloke." And he said, "This is a good." And I said, "Well, why am I colour blind? If I can see that number, and you can't." He said, "Ah, the thing is that." You're in the minority, yeah. yeah. Then that's why you're colour blind, yeah. So that was that. With his, it can show that on his, on his book. So, in uh, with the electrical wiring, I presume you had red cables and possibly yeah. green cables. Yeah, so, but it, but so, we didn't. Yeah, but basically, what, what we didn't sort of rewire the aeroplane. Right, you didn't like go that. sort of like any mini miny mo. Quite one of Luke. Well, what 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 we did do is this, like. The, we, on the batteries, we changed the batteries and all the equipment, you know, and, uh, and so the, the wiring was already there, yeah. let, let's be fair, so we, we didn't sort of rewire the wiring there. Okay, so you're back in Padstow, you've done your, all the electrician courses, you've been three years in the Navy and you still haven't set foot on a boat, a ship. <laughs> <laughs> no, you applied to go overseas, no one wants you. Nobody wanted me. And so, as I say, I got married, and I got your mum, and um, we, 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 um, we, we came out, um, and she came down there, yeah, and, and she lived with, with me for a while. You know, we, I lived ashore. And then the, the, the office said to me, I got a message from, from the office. I think it was down there. Yeah. And they said, uh, you've got a foreign draft. There's a boat being air, air, leading, air, leading electrician killed on, on the boats in Korea and you're, you're flying out to replace him. Okay. And I said, oh, all oh, right. So of course I go back and tell your mum and there's all these tears and all this shit. <laughs> anyway, we'll get back in. And next day, and the, and the bloke says, ha, 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 big joke. Yeah, I said, you, in a it was a joke. You know? Oh, okay. And then a week later, he called me in again. He said, you've got a draft this time. Ah, I said, don't start that. Yes, he said, you have to join 801 Air Squadron. And so I was transferred into to, uh, to Daedalus. 
and that's uh, it down at Pompey, uh, Portsmouth, uh, on the Fleet Air Arm Base at there. Yeah. And I joined 801 Air Squadron, which was uh, a Fury Squadron. Um, and uh, but what going back a bit, whilst I was at, at St Mirren, I worked on all kinds of different airplanes, eh? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because and also the sea otter, I don't know if you've ever known sea otters, there was a, they used to have a backward engine, so I worked on them because we had to have the sea otter flying before the, the pilots could fly f f off of off of St Mirren, and actually St Mirren was a, a training, more of a training uh, air air base for pilots, you know. Right. So we lost a load of pilots, you know, a lot of them. A lot, of, a lot of them don't survive, you know, not in, well, not in my day they didn't. And it wasn't my airplane, so that's what I started. But th this was it, so that's what, the, what that was there. So I worked on quite a number of different air, different types of airplanes. So. Anyway, so anyway, I, 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 just, I got transferred to the Daedalus 801 Squadron. I mean, as I say, big tears from your mum. And, and me, I was choked, of course. Uh, I think all, this, all those years I spent, it, you know, as a single man, and then when I get married and get settled down, and then, then that's when they send me abroad, eh? Yeah. Still. How long had you been married at that stage? Oh, a couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Oh, about, yeah, about a year. Just, a just, years. just, just sort of pause there. Um, now might be a good, good, ch a good time. Just, how did you meet Mum? How did all that happen? Uh, that's a big, a cheeky, cheeky cockney, eh? <laughs> I, um, on one of my leaves, I, I, I phoned up, she, she worked in the People's Palace in, in, in at Mile End Road. So that's, say, what, a uh, picture theatre or something? Okay. Not, not a picture theatre. Sorry, you didn't have movies in those it was, It was a theatre. Oh, okay. Real and, acting and stuff. Yeah, yeah and okay. there was an opera on. Um, was it Labo? Or was it that one? Or was it Faust? I forget what it was now. Anyway, there was an opera. Um, and uh, I decided to take my sister Elsie to the, to the opera. And, and I phoned up for seats, you know. And of course this woman answered and I fell in love with the voice because it, she sounded beautiful over the phone. She was beautiful anyway, but she just sounded over the phone gorgeous now. And I booked this seat and I said, because I want cushions on the seats and you know, okay, yeah. it was a chick or ch bloody chat up type of sort. <laughs> a typical Matt, Matt Lowe, you know, and she sort of bought it. So I chatted her up and then when I went to, to, to the uh, to the opera, uh, uh, I think in the end of the year, I went and sorted her out, you know, and um, so we had a date, yeah. <laughs> and it was from then on, was, uh, that was it, yeah. okay. but it was a bit cheeky over the phone. But, that, that's quite amusing because <clears throat> in these days people, you know, often meet online, on, on the internet, on dating sites or something, that's their first first meeting and you know there was quite a bit of oh shock horror you know you have fancy meeting online that's that's terrible but you kind of did that anyway you, via the telephone well, lots of things I've done in my time uh, I seem to have been the first because years and years later they they do the same you know I, mm. I remember but, but, <laughs> Going well, 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 about fifty. I mean, now forward about fifty or sixty years. I used to give a lectures uh, 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 for SBCA uh, to the ins to the inspectors, you know, because I was in charge of the inspector. And I remember I going out there one, and I wanted to teach them about photography or the way to take photos. So uh, uh, it was a board there, and I wanted to draw this horse. You see. So what did I do? I drew a horse. Straight line for a head, straight line for a back, straight line for four legs, you see, and a tail. 
<laughs> anyway, that was my horse. Your and stick figure. Yeah. So I said, it was a stick figure. And I mm -hmm. said, that, you know. Now I gave the lecture. Now I come back after I've done my bit. And I come back and say, and these two two women, you know, it's disgusting. She said, <laughs> my kid could grow to a better horse than that. <laughs> <laughs> and and I thought it didn't take a lot of oh, artistic more than. But you see on the adverts now. They, they had, it, especially. Uh, oh, you're packing so bad. Yeah, they're all stick men. Now I did. I used to do that years ago. So I think, oh well, you know. <laughs> the, the main thing is, if she was upset about the way I drew my horse, it shows that they paid attention. Eh? <laughs> that that was the point. Eh? Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that was years hence. Now go back. So, um, can you remember your first date? First date. Yeah, with with mum, where you went or. Oh, we didn't go anywhere, really, because I used to have to get a train to go over to see her, and of course she lived at Bucker Still, right. and I, I would be in Peckham when I come ashore, when I came and leave. So, um, yeah, I used to go over to, to see her, you know. Uh, I can't remember where we used to go. Oh, I, I remember getting all upset one day, I, I was at... Um, Outside this, um, the, the People's Palace it was called, this, this theatre. And I remember I was home on leave this particular time and uh, I'm, I'm outside waiting for her and, and uh, she came out and said, I can't come. The money just says I've got to work on And I was furious because, you know, I, was, I could be a bad tempered bugger, I suppose. <laughs> really? <laughs> and um, I got all huffy, didn't I? You know, and I said, I'm only here for seven, you know, seven days. Or just, get your coat and come. Get, get. <laughs> And so she did. So I, I don't know whether she got the sack out of that job or not, but I know I just thought it was unfair. So there was me come home and I was only home for a little while, and, and he wanted her to work all night. So yeah, was, uh, yeah, I remember that that that, that bit. Yeah. So and when and what about your your sort of wedding day? You've you've told us that you had to ask permission to get married because she was only nineteen, yeah. and. Yeah, you, my mum. Your mum said no, but you finally got permission from your dad. Yeah. Um. That we've got some photos of your, of your wedding. Couple of photos of of you and, and mum. Um. So it was, it, it looked like it was a prop pucker wedding. I mean, she had, there was the oh, you know the trish, traditional cake yeah, and the traditional dress and. We, we had it. The wedding was in Buckerstall, of course. And uh, we'd they'd hired the, the drill hall at, at Buckers Hill, uh, and um, it was and, and I remember when she got the um, when when the vicar gave her, we had to go and you sign that after the wedding, and, and he gives her the marriage certificate, and I remember him folding it up and giving it to your mum, not to me, and he said. Hang on to that, my dear, because that's all you've got against him. And I, I remember that quite plain, eh? Anyway, then we had this, went, went back to the hall and had a, a slap up feed and what have you. And then we had a, your mum and I went back to the house to get changed. Um, and, and that was the first time you, you, I ever made love to your mum, was that when we went back. On your honeymoon, or your wedding night? The wedding, wedding day, yeah. We never never indulged in any sex before that, ever. That was fairly that was fairly no normal, fairly well, typical of the time, uh, uh, was it? Yeah, it, that, that was normal from then. And uh, anyway, so we went back and, um, and then she got changed and, and I went back. And, <coughs> and her mate uh, was married to a, to a sailor. He was a submariner. So, of course, he was there, he was at there, and a few other Matlows of his friends at this. So, there was quite a few Matlows there. And um, at Sailors, by the way. Right, I was about to, I was, I was wondering, but I didn't want to show my ignorance. I've done that once, yeah, twice no, too a, many. A, a sailor <laughs> was a Matlow. Right. And, uh, I thought was, they were bullfighters, but no, no. That's Matador, isn't it? Yeah. Did that as well. But, uh, <laughs> he was a sub mariner you know, in the subs. And um, we, in fact, your mum and I spent the first night at his house, or uh, uh, her house, you know.
Yeah, uh, they were, they went away somewhere else, and we spent the night, and that night there. Uh, and I'm, I remember w when I was walking t towards the house, we, we, there was a load of yobbos. This was late at night, and there was a load of yobs, a little gang of yobbos, you know. And I remember saying to your mum, go on, "You go on ahead, you know, you go on ahead." And so I could keep myself between these jobs, and because when you walked around as a sailor, serious, in naval uniform, and let's be fair, I had no other clothes, but, but uh, um, you either picked up queers, oh, I picked up quite a few queers, yeah, and you know, you <laughs> chat you up, or Jack, or you get jobs that. Want, oh, want you know, service you want to beat you up and all this rubbish, you know. Okay. So, uh, just nothing happened. No, no, it was just yeah. a, we were, I, I remember that that instance. <coughs> yeah. But this wedding was 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 beautiful, and um, we had this dance and all that. And your mum, oh, she loved it. Everybody danced with her, you know. And um, Fred Morris, that was my brother-in-law, came up and he says, no booze for you. He said, you're not getting drunk tonight. And I said, Peter, well, you're not getting drunk. He said, that's it. I'm not having it. <laughs> so what I did, I grabbed a bottle of beer and went and sat in, the, in this kitchen. <laughs> and there's your mum enjoying herself with all these bloody matlows and what have you, dancing her head off. And there's me sitting in this kitchen, something in beer, because Fred Morris won't let me have no booze. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose he, he was right, I suppose, really, because, uh, you know, he didn't want me to get drunk and start all that nonsense. No, no, right. I, didn't, I didn't drink, not, not, not to that extent. Yeah. Uh, and I never had. Uh, it's, it's like, w w when you reach the age of 20 in the Navy, you, c you could then get your grog, uh, which was uh, one-third rum and two-thirds water, you know, that so was grog, and you got that. The ration every day, and and I used to, I used to be, uh, I was temperance for a little while, but then I turned over to grog, and because um, I wanted to soak my pipes in it. Oh, okay. So I, I, basically, that's what I did to me with me, grog and soak my pipes in it. Or the other thing, you could get a lot done from the other blokes for a tot, right? You yeah. know, like if you wanted a sub, I'm gonna. Get, Give them a top, or I'll do your sub, you know, for a couple of tops. So it was. It was a currency. It was good barter. Yeah, it was good to barter. What, so what part of your pipe did you smoke? Um, so all, yeah. all, all the barrel. Okay. So what did that do? I don't know. You're supposed to um, <laughs> soak it. In. But that's all. Okay. I used to soak my pipe. Yeah. Bloody great. Because you, you see, in, in the navy, we we also got could get. Tobacco and, and or cigarettes and or cigarette tobacco, so we, we had a ration of that that we could would get. So sometimes I used to get a, a, a tin of you know, a tin of uh, pipe tobacco yeah. or possibly a tin of, of um, uh, cigarette tobacco. Right. So, so that's the kind of tobacco I used to smoke. You know that that, that uh, from the navy or. You could get what they call a prick of tobacco, and I don't mean it in being <laughs> vulgar. Although, although that's the way some of the blokes used to smuggle tobacco out of the dockyard. Tell the story a minute. <laughs> a prick of tobacco is leaves that's rolled, right, like, so, a, like so, a big cigar or something. Yeah, and, be, and of course. You, you, they're soaked in, in rum and what have you, and, and you roll them and then you bind them with tar rope, with thin tar rope, right? Yeah. So they go solid and hard. Yeah. So when you want to put them in your pipe, you, you cut a, a slice off yep. and just roll it in your hand and put it in. Right. And um, one of, because whether it happens or not, I don't know, it may be just a sailor's yarn, but they reckon that. They used to put this prick of tobacco down the trousers, right? <laughs> and when you're going ashore, if some of these Admiralty police, you know, they're all cocky buggers, some of them used to feel, oh, what's that? And you just, oh, that's prick. Oh, right. And then they'd 
They sort of grew it bigger to bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's the way they go. But that, I mean, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But that, that was what they said. But that was a, a prick to back. So you could get, you could get leaves, as I told you before, or, or this tobacco. So you could make your own. And then, of course, later on in in the time, then cigarettes came out. Uh, as well, uh, right. what, they were what we call blue line cigarettes, and um, so you could have, get a couple of hundred of them as well. Yeah. From there went on to Daedalus, da Daedalus, yeah. uh, it was Pompey. Right. And so at, at Portsmouth, um, we, we all met, well, our crowd, you know, so I was stationed there for a, a, quite a, a wee while, and your mum went back to live in Bucca still. Right. right. And I was, I was stationed at Daedalus with this squadron. And then eventually we, we went on to a ship, an aircraft carrier called, and I remembered, Illustrious. I, I, did. I remember that some time back. Now what they were doing with Illustrious is that they were using her as a troop carrier. She was an aircraft carrier. Yeah. And so they, they, she went all around the world taking up troops, putting off troops and all that. So, and there was airmen, air force and all, all kinds of people on it, you know. So anyway, our squadron went on this illustrious and we, and uh, so we sailed out from Portsmouth with all the paraphernalia, you know, but your mum didn't come, she was to, uh, you know, we all had the line on the deck. And I remember, <laughs> it was the first time I'd ever been on a boat, this, this, you know, this leading hand, and I was <laughs> yeah, the first yeah, time yeah. I got a bloody boat. Three, three, were, or, three or more years in the Navy. I, I, and, and we had to lie on the deck, you know, as they do, this carrier. As you, you've seen them, and you go out, all yeah. the sailors are lined on. And, and I was, God, cool, it's a bloody long way down. <laughs> and I, I thought, I edged back, hey. <laughs> and as I edged back, there was a PO walking, going, get forward, get forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheeky mother. Anyway. So they played all Lang Syne and all that rubbish, and, and we, we left the port. But we, we went up to Glasgow, and we just spent the night in Glasgow. Yeah. And uh, we went ashore, didn't we? Yeah, it's quite a good run ashore. <laughs> well, because I was no woman, eh? You know, I was single again. Mm. So I had a good run ashore, but I didn't indulge. <laughs> and then from there, of course, we sailed over to Malta. And um, oh, to Malta, we were, right? We were put ashore at, at Malta, and that's where we um, we worked up our air, aircraft worked up what we called in Malta on on a on an air station called How Far, and um, we were there for oh, quite quite a wee, wee while, you know. I forget how long we was there, uh, and I know that. Um, and that's where we joined our ship, uh, Glory. That's when we joined the. Joined that was the, your ship. That was our ship. The HMS Glory. Yeah. So we joined the ship Glory, and when we, we went on board the Glory, and we used to go, uh, go afloat during the day, after that and back. So the, the aircraft got used to flying off the off the Glory and the pilots and all that, and we used to come back at night, and that's when we went. And we showed the flag in Barcelona, Spain. Um, we went in, into there and, as, as a fleet. And of course, one of the stories there was that as, as we were docking, you know, they throw ropes out to tiny. We're all in our whites and oh, all posh. And one of the things went to grab the ropes when I said, me in the water. It was sort of, you know, a high sailor. <laughs> and he went. He was all right. He didn't. He was. He, he didn't drown. I think. But he, yeah, and that's when I had a beard. I'd, I'd had a beard by that time, uh, or oh, a bit of a beard. And um, I remember these little Spanish kids all come laughing at us because we had beards. Yeah, and I thought, oh Christ, the beard was Spanish, wasn't it? You know, but no, not in those days. And um, so we went ashore in Spain, in, in Barcelona, it was quite good. And, and we, we sort of met up with a young kid, uh, and he um, he asked if he could show us around because he wanted to learn his English. And he did, I mean, it, it wasn't, he, he wasn't trying to pick us up for women or anything silly like that. And he, he was with us, you know. 
uh, and to because he learned his way. And we was in this pub, well, it was kind of a cafe type pub, yeah. And and I've got a photo of it of, of them there. They're not a pub as we know them, but there was a cafe, but it sold all the booze. You know? And um, of course, we'd had a few in Jolly Jack. You know, I, I tell you, my mouth gets me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, and I said, there, what we saying? I said, who's this bloke? Um, Oh, I forget his name now. Who was in charge in, in, in Spain? Castro? No, uh, it wasn't Castro. Oh, the other fellow. <laughs> anyway, I should think of it in a minute. So I said, Who's, it? Who's this bloke? Wait, wait, wait. And it all went quiet in the pub. And this, bloke, this young boy said, Come quick, quick. <laughs> and got us out of the pub. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, what a stupid thing to do, because, I mean, in those days, they shoot you for saying things like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Franco. Oh. Who's this bloke, Franco? Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and God, the whole pub went dead quiet. <laughs> yeah. And another another time we wanted to cross the road, and I wanted to do something, and I started walking, and this policeman's there, <laughs> on his bleeding whistle, and, and so I walked over to him, what, what? <laughs> what he was trying to say is, you don't move until I tell you to. Because <laughs> uh, he was looking for the way to the bullfight, uh, to, the, to go and see the bullfight. Mm -hmm. And that's where I saw, when we was in Barcelona, that's, that's where I saw six bulls um, killed. And I was not amused, eh? Mm -hmm. it, it didn't amuse me. The only thing that did amuse me about the whole lot was that, because you can imagine that a load of matlows were at this ball fight you know <laughs> the, the matlows finally meet the matadors this is good this is going to be great <laughs> so we're all there and these bulls and this one particular fellow matador he, there was an english bloke there as well as a matador yeah. but he wasn't very good but this one was, he was waving his flag or his cloak anyway the bull got him and up he went up in the air and he went smack down and all the matlows, <laughs> we all cheered them. All our bloody hats went up there. <laughs> and I thought, God, this can be a riot. <laughs> I mean, the Spanish weren't amused. <laughs> they, they didn't see the funny side of it. We did. Yeah, and uh, nothing happened, of course. But uh, yeah, but I, as I used to say, I saw this bullfight. But you know, time the lance man had stuck the bloody great lances in these poor bulls and that they were just bleeding to death. Yeah. And that's why they're black bulls, because you can't see the blood coming from them. Oh, okay. But it would pour out of them, you know. I mean, the lances, the, 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 the point was about that long with the flange, and that went right into the bull's back. And that would be possibly two or three times, eh? Well, and the poor bull was half dead before the, the, the chummy with his sword got uh, busy, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, that's, what, that's when he was tossed. He, he went to go to, with the bull, you know, and as he went, the old bull, the old bull got him. Up he went, you know, and that's when all the mallows cheered, yeah. But anyway, that's, so I did see bullfight. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we had a big talk from Earl, Mount, Earl, Mount, Earl Mountbatten. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I got a photo of that. Wishing the ship's company well, uh, because we was out to join the China fleet, you know, to be so. That's, that's when we sailed out to Singapore, and we were in in the China fleet in that, uh, club, China fleet club, you know. and uh, then of course from there we sailed on to Korea. And that's when we was out in the Far East fleet. Yeah. Right, so when you were stationed at Malta, was the Korean War on? Yeah. So, so you knew there was war? Yeah, we were going out to, 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 that's what we were working up for. Right, so you knew all this all yeah. the time. Was, did, it, did, that, did it excite you or scare you or what, what was... It was our job. Oh, okay, so you didn't really have a feeling one way or the other. Oh, it was... And I did, the only thing, the thing I did think about, and what I was thinking about this the other day, we used to go swimming every afternoon in water because we, we worked what they call a summer routine. Uh, I think we worked, we was up at six or something, we worked till twelve, and then we had the afternoon off because of the heat and all that rubbish. Oh, okay. And we, if we weren't duty watch, we just go down and go swimming, and in the med, and it was as clear as beautiful. It was clean as a whistle, you know. 
and you could you swim out and, and there's all these corals and underneath you and, that, and it was absolutely beautiful, yeah. But they tell me now that it's, it's all shitty and dirty, but mm -hmm. when I was out there it was beautiful, hey? lovely and clean. Yeah. And uh, And you got a bit of a tan while you was over there. We got photos of you, you can barely fucking make it. you can see your uni white uniform but you can't see you. Oh, yeah, black, black as a pink, black as ink. Yeah. Um a lot of us got, got but it was only we did, I don't oh well, well I suppose we did some paid a bit but not not too much but we was out in the topics and, and you know, the old fellow that goes brown pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, so uh we sort of got got, uh, got a nice tan, yeah. But it was, and because in, also in those days as well, we we were, used to do a lot of gymnastics on our own, bodybuilding. You know, we yeah. all thought we was young Mr. Atlases, and <laughs> so we did all did a lot, lot of bodybuilding and running and uh, all kinds of things. But, um, so we was really as fit as. As, I was as fit as I ever was in those days, eh? Right. Because we had no television or anything silly like that. So, yeah. the same like when we was at St Mirren, um, I was in the tug of war team down there. Uh, I got a medal for, for it, for tug of war. And uh, so, and of course, the other thing we, we used to try and do was to do the. Um, Pulling bloody guns, the gun, 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 gun thing. What what they did? They used to have a gun, a cannon, and they used to, have to charge with this cannon, dismantle it, go across this crevasse, and then get the other side, put the gun back together again, and fire it. Right. So the gun crew. That's it, that's it. So there's, there's something you would see in a military tattoo these days. It's sort of the thing. That's well, well, and this, and this actually, I tell you, your mum uh, and her mates went up to um, the Olympia, the Olympia in, in London, where where this tattoo thing was going on, and they had a job to get in. And but she said, my husband's in the field gun crew, and. Uh, Oh, oh, that's all right. And so she got in. I wasn't. <laughs> so she, I mean, I was still back in bloody Cornwall because I couldn't get into field gun crew, eh? Because oh. I wasn't good enough. Well, they was fit as fiddle. And actually, the story goes that uh, this, that they were when they were putting this thing, putting the, the thing back together again. The, the, somebody had dropped this, the the cotton pin that goes in to keep the. So this bloody POC stuck his finger in it. Yeah. Shit. And then poof, oh. I tell you, they were mad. Eh? You, you, you get, Holy shit! He must have broken his finger. They did. <laughs> you, 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 you get worked up. Couldn't you imagine swinging a, a lot over a, 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 on a rope with, with a bloody great wheel hanging onto your body? And, and you know, and this is what they did. And, and the reason is, it, it goes back to, uh, it, it, I think it was Quebec in history, and. Um, when they, were, they couldn't take the, they couldn't take Quebec from the front uh, because it was too too alarmed, you know. And so one of the admirals had this brilliant idea, and they dismantled a load of the guns on the ship and oh, they okay. lugged them across land and went all round the back of Quebec, and they set them all up at the back. And so and and so Quebec was cooked. Now they should have learned a lesson there because. That's the way the bloody Japs took Singapore during the war. We had it. They couldn't attack or get to Singapore from the front because they were too well armed. So yeah. where did the Japs come from? They come to the back, which yeah. which was, was thick jungle. And of course, the, the, some of the generals we had in there, oh my God, old chap, you know, oh, they wouldn't come through here, but they bloody did. Yeah. So. But you see, people don't learn, eh? They, they, they just don't learn. Still, I was never a general, so. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, I t so tell me about career then. Um, you've you've gone from Malta, I think. Um, you've joined the China fleet, Singapore. Yeah. That now, now you're heading out to Korea. You know you're going into an active theatre, I think, is the... Yeah. Is the 
tell me, tell me, pick, pick the story up from there. Well, it was just another job. How can I explain it? I was in the Navy and we did a job. Um, we weren't excited, we weren't worried, because we had this job. We, we did a job and, and that, that was it. Okay. So, uh, oh, and as I say, it was sad when we used to lose these pilots, but I mean, they were peaks, eh? You know? I mean, the pilots? You don't know, oh, of course you don't know. In the Navy, you get the lower deck, that's us crowd, you know, oh. and then you've got the officers. Well, they were always called pigs, oh, okay. and they were lived in a pigsty. That was the water one. So, as far as we were concerned, they were pigs. It goes back in history, eh, when the lower deck used to hate the bloody officers anyway, and the bicky burky, of course. Mm -hmm. So, that, that was still there. Uh, so, you know, if we lost a part, as I say, we lost 22 of them. And, oh, we had a funeral service and, and that for them. And, but then, even when I was in, in, in uh, Mepatso, I was in the funeral guards there because we lost quite a few pilots there because they were training. I told you that was yeah. a training set. So, I mean, a few of them didn't make it. And we, we used to have a burial party for them, you know. So, it was all good fun, yeah. Yeah. So it was. It was so, so small what, for us. What, can you remember what you know? What what was your routine then? I, I mean, how long was you in Korea? So how long was you actively well, putting well, bombs on yeah, what, planes? What, what we used to do, we we used to um, we were based. Basically, we were in a, in a place called Kyuri, right, in Japan, yeah. and that was the English base. And then Curie, we used to anchor up alongside, okay? And we would ammunition ship and all that rubbish. And then we would go out and I think we would bomb and do that for about a week. And then we would take on fuel. And so you get these tankers used to come up alongside and, yeah. and, and refuel the ship. You know, you used to go, you've seen, I've got photos of that down there. So, and then so you go for another week. So I think it was out for about a fortnight or more. And then we'd come back to ammunition ship. Yeah. But occasionally, oh, no, one time we'd come back to Curie, the next time we'd come back to Sasebo. Now that was a Yankee base. Yeah? And the Yanks wouldn't let, allow us to, to, to um, come in alongside because we had ammunition on board. So we had to anchor out, in in in, in right anchor out. So we, if we want to come ashore, I've got pictures of that too. We used to come ashore and land in craft. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and and then when we was waiting, say to go back to the ship, and, and this is why you, you you wonder why I hate bloody Yanks, and I do, and I do <laughs> hate them. It's that you, you'd have the jetty there, right? and there'd be U.S. Navy. And then this little bit there, that was for other other sea, you know, which because we had there was the Dutch and well, that, well, um, one of the New Zealand boats was up there as well, and, okay. and uh, that, yeah, that was uh, others, you know. But, but us, you know, we had a lot. Yeah. What well, was their base? I mean, fair's fair. <laughs> oh, we couldn't come. It couldn't come near because we had ammunition on board. Oh dear! Oh dear! <laughs> Bloody Yanks! Anyway. Uh, um, so then, so that so we would come back to Sasebo one time and back to Curie the next, uh, and I, I, was, I was up there nearly two years I think. Well, we had an extra time to stay up there because um, the ship that was going to relieve us. I forget which which ship was going to relieve us up there. They were working up at Malta like we did, and they had an accident. In fact, that one of the air, the last airplanes on there. They, for some other reason, they got through the barrier. How it got through that, I don't know. And wiped out a whole bloody squadron of aircraft up, all parked up forward. So of course we had to had to do extra time up there whilst they get further aircraft and get pilots and to get all that ready. So we we had to stay up there an extra while. Yeah. So to to tell me about um, far away, could you hear the fighting? No. no. Could. You could see the sea land. No, 
Oh, uh, so it was all kind of an invisible war to yeah. you then? Well, see, what, what used to happen, I told you about the Mighty Mo, you know, in Missouri. And also, you'd have the aircraft carrier, that was central, okay? And then you'd have destroyers around you. Um, and, and you were what you call a chaser. One, one particular store, destroyer would be a chaser. So if anything happened on board here, like it did, when people went over the side, <laughs> this fellow come up awake and, and supposed to pick them up. Again, quote, on the flight deck there, the, the kites were revving up and um, if you've got aircraft handlers, you just have to lay down by the wheels and hold the chocks, two chocks, wheels. Yeah. And this particular time, if the aircraft were, were, were uh, are lined up, you see, like this, and then you've got one kind of there. And, and I think it was this one. The, um, uh, uh, this, this airman, this, uh, uh, he let his um, chop go or something, I don't know. And the PO was a bit, the, the hand, no, had a, it was, it was, he was a bit pissed off with And he went under there and said, we have to watch your bucket something. Like and as he started to walk back out, this aeroplane here turned up to go up, come up, and he got caught in the, in, into the stream and got pushed, blown over the end, over the last end. So we um, they sent you no know, signal for for the chaser to come up. And what was it? A Yankee boat, of course. And he come up that way, at fucking full speed. Now. When a black, if you look at the back of an aircraft car, because you're going full full bore into the wind, eh? so you've got quite a, a turmoil at the back. Now him coming up for he wouldn't have been seen the bloke because going over so all all you would see is a little head. They wouldn't have even seen him. But no, he had to come up full up that way. And because as he come alongside, all the boys were working out, and we went bloody daft, eh? So. That's why we don't like Yanks. Eh? It's, it's, it's all these silly things that happen. Anyway, he, we lost him, of course. He, 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 he was uh, he was dead. We never did find him. Yeah. And uh, on, uh, also, see, everything wasn't real harsh. Um, on the way out to to uh, Korea, uh, as I say, we stopped at Hong Kong, and um, we went ashore in Hong Kong, and that's when. Uh, I did go sort of, and look at some of these brussels and whatever, <laughs> and you got a photo of me in, in the China Fleet Club, yeah, with two of my mates. And yeah. So we had a few, few tenders there. So that was all right. And then we went to Singapore, uh, and I think at the time the bandits were shooting at us or something, because we, we raided the bandits, by the way. We bombed them. Yeah. Anyway, they were we were sort of anchored out in what they call Singapore, Singapore roads and um, we wanted to get to the town of Singapore you see so and, and of course they, the, the dockies the, the dockyard labourers were, were English fellows you see uh, you know, but they thought they were a class above us and they wouldn't allow us as sailors to use their swimming pool Oh. oh God, no! <laughs> Fucking mad! Oh. That's true, right? and they they refused to let us use their swimming pool, which didn't worry us very much. But um, so we had to get a bus, and, and, and this bus had to go like hell for leather <laughs> into Singapore because of the bandits were possibly having a shoot at us. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't can't ever remember them shooting us, but that that was one of the reasons we had to go like clap as hell. Yeah, so. Um, and, and and then you saw uh, we, in this Singapore there. That's I was in, in this fleet club there again. Always standing up in a pub, and I was having a drink in it. And I saw all these soldiers, bloody great fellas they were, but black black as ink and quite big fellas. And I thought, oh, and they they would just come back from the jungle, you know, fighting in the jungle. And then that was. Where really, I was, that was my first sight of Fijians, eh? They were oh, okay. Fijian regiment. I didn't know at the time, but they were big fellows. And, um, and then, because then on the way out from there, Singapore, on the way out to, to Korea, that's when we went out and did a, 
our kites did a strike on, on, on the jungles. Apparently they pattern bombed a, a, a part of the jungle and they say that they were only waiting they, they got a few to come in and surrendered after that. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, we, we bombed them. Um, was, that was our first raid in, in anger, I suppose. You could call it, yeah. T tell me, um, I, two two questions. One is, tell me you back on the on the on the ship on the glory. When these you were planes were, boat, you? Yeah, when the, when these when these kites come back to land. See, I'm learning the lingo. The 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 the, the, the boat, <laughs> the ship would would sort of you know like move about. And it used to bump a few of them off as they tried to land. Is that how it worked? Or, well, they, or, they lost a few. Yeah, I got a photo. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, I'm yeah. going over the side. Yeah, what's and, all and that about? And silly father standing in the box, ooh, watching him. Um, that was very rare. It, it was all pilot error pilot at times. Because, again, the, 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 you had to go into the wind, eh? and, and they landed on. But you, got, you had a bat, batsman with his bats. To, to guide the chummy on, and actually I've seen them go like and wave them off and then run up the deck, sort of kicking like get off them. These are these are pigs, you know. <laughs> yeah, but um, so uh, and, and occasionally you, you, you get the miss like that. That one did. Uh, it, it, for some reason, I like it, it just missed what it was doing, and, and of course that went straight over the side mm. because they drop a deck hook, they drop a hook, right. Uh, and as they come on, they, they come down and they cut the engine and they drop, and they, 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 they drop on, they, they don't come on that way, they come on there and then they drop, right. and that's when you get a big bang, you know, but then they're going forward, and that's when the deck hook hooks these cables across the deck, yeah. and that's what pulls them up, and if they don't, you've got nets up far there, uh, and actually when... They used to come back, if they come back with rockets on sometimes, and the rockets didn't fire. wasn't my fault. <laughs> it was okay when they left my car. <laughs> the the they, brown they, was clearly in the red they, socket. They, it wasn't my fault. And they come on and they do that, and of course they, they get pulled out. <laughs> and then bloody rockets would go shooting up, up the deck. Oh, sure. Uh, uh, but of course, this, again, this net was there, uh, uh, and, and the sort of bottom half was real, real tight mesh. It? And what has to happen <laughs> is one of these poor little armourers, you know, he had to run out, he had to pick this bloody rocket up, and he'd run to the side and chucked it over the side of the ship quick, you know, <laughs> that, was, that was his job. And, and, the, and the story tells me, and I don't really know how true it is, but apparently one day he did chuck this over there, and <laughs> there was <clears throat> these sailors, eh? oh, yeah, we didn't get on with the sailors, of course, <laughs> they were in one of the lifeboats, you know, yeah. washing it or something, oh. <laughs> and he tucked it and the, the rocket left. Straight in the boat. <laughs> yeah, that didn't, was didn't go off, I don't. No, it didn't go off. Oh, oh shit. But there was, uh, I think there's, there's a couple of shit themselves, but, <laughs> yeah. And we used to have, um, on board, we had a, 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 a we had our own wireless, brilliant, you know. Like when these pilots used to prang in, in and they used to come aboard. And and the, the, the this kid one of the he was once one of the sailors you saw right and he he said ah straight from death we have got and and and, and they talked to the pilot about about it you know about how he what happened there yeah. and and there was a an instance that also we were eight oh one squadron and there was another squadron on deck with us seven and six seven nine six I think it was. And they were a firefly squadron, and and they had uh, they used to have two seater type things, you know, and they'd never had an accident, it, never. It was one of them. Things, they never. hadn't been on Andy ship. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't work on them. No, sir. I, I didn't work on these fireflies. Uh, and um, we had this army intelligence corps on board, uh, you know, because of. Checking how the fighting was going on and all this rubbish, and um, apparently the story goes that this five day fight and they've got this army intelligent joker in the back, and they come in 
And apparently this joke, and the, the, the army joke, they said, how do you get out of this bloody thing, you know, because they all looked in. And the pilot said, oh, that's why I'll show you, you know, when we get it. Anyway, they didn't. If, again, I've got to this way. He went over the side. And that was the very first accident they've ever had, eh? <laughs> and of course, down it went, and, this, and the pilot got out, and, and, and he's trying to get, well, this, this boat thing sinks, I mean, yeah. you don't float. And he's, he's trying to get his other boat out. And, Apparently this army that was, and it, he hit the, managed to hit the button and the cockpit flew open and of course he came up and came out as well. And uh, yeah, and, and that that afternoon or that 12 o'clock time or whatever it was, our radio, from the jaws of death, <laughs> and I interviewed this note, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it was brilliant. And, and of course, I, the thing I didn't tell you, that, that we, we did swim. Uh, on the way out to Korea, we went up the the, the um, Suez Canal, you know, and uh, we could see the army, the army but I could see, you can almost touching the sides of the parts in the Suez Canal, and all the army blokes were there going, you know, to us because they knew where we were going. Have <laughs> you? Yeah, and uh, when you, you go halfway up, and then you got to wait for the down convoy, you know. And there was, uh, it's a big area, I don't know what they call it, it's got a name. Anyway, we were anchored up here waiting, so you put up pipes, hands to bays. So in we go, yeah. And the, there was a tourist ship full of, you know, the tours there. And they were all, all crowded aside, seeing all these matos leaping over the side, yeah. Was, and Did was, you jump off like the side of the boat? Yeah. That was about a freaking long way down. Well, well, yeah, but you had to, didn't you? How are you going to get down there if you didn't? Well, so I was thinking, but aren't you petrified of heights? When you've been on board, <laughs> and when all the rest of like rats are going over, you go, that's it. The worst part was coming coming back, because <laughs> they had ropes, rope ladders. Oh, fuck, you had to climb those. Oh. <laughs> and then your bare, bare thighs. That, that used to hurt, you know, up the ladder, but you, you don't go up the ladder that way, you go sideways up and, Jesus, yeah, so that wasn't very happy. <laughs> but um, other than that, yeah, well, we used to leap off there. And and also, when, when we were going out some water, we stopped uh, uh, and uh, he piped hands to bathe uh, and, and the place was what we call U-Boat Alley and it's where the U-Boats sank a lot of ships during okay. the war. Okay. And, and um, that was my first experience of swimming in, in the sea. And of course, we all jumped over the side and lovely, and I was swimming. And, and I thought, I looked down and I thought, God, how many poor bastards are still down there dead, you know, in the ships? Yeah. And it, it, it wasn't a, it was a, wasn't a very nice feeling, I can assure you. But still, there, there you are, we, we did swim in there. So I have swum in the med and, and in the, in, in the, uh, so it's good. Yeah. I, okay, I got a, I got one question that's sort of semi-related, but not specifically. Is a lot of stuff through your life, e even you know, back at Ethel's, you've all, you've got a lot of photos. How did you manage to document, you know, so much of your life with photos? Because later on, and and when you when you get into the pub game, we actually got, I don't know, eight millimeter cine films as well. So, was you a keen photographer? Did you, no. did, or did you get others to take them or what? On board ship, on board ship, you, you've got the photography people as well, and they would take photos of all, all landing on and all this. Oh, photos, okay. And went ashore and all that, and in the canteen flat, which is just the canteen according to you Bill, uh, he used, they used to put all these photos up, well, I asked, but they did it for uh, pin money, you know, yeah. and they used to put all these photos up, and that's where I had all those photos, you know, oh, okay. if you saw the one you wanted, you, you took it and you paid for it. You know? Right, so, so that I... accounted for all them, and even some of the ones ashore, um, they, they would take their camera ashore as well, so, so yeah. Uh, they were taken by the, our photographers 
Geez, that would have been a cushy number, wouldn't well, it? Well, of course it was. I but mean, he, naval photographer. Well, there you are. I mean, sorry, sorry, boss, I can't do that. I'm, I've got to take some photos. <laughs> I think, see, that's why. I, I mean, all these jobs that went were going, and I had to get that bloody electrician job. Anyway, yeah. So that, that's what they did. It was they? better than the bloody being an armourer and having to yeah. <laughs> play rugby, yeah. rugby yeah. with a live. It was always a little fella. They, they mustn't took him out. Yeah, poor bugger. But so, anyway, anyway, how did the how did the navy years wind up, Dad? Um, like, um, yeah, to talk me through the rest of it, from well, from Korea to when uh, when, when I came you, back to to wherever you went next. Yeah, well, well, of course, well, when we came back from Korea, um, well, one of the things they wanted us to do, um, which was pretty ghastly, the Admiralty apparently wanted us to offload the aircraft. Uh, at uh, Pompey and then go up to uh, Glasgow to get the rest of the squadron off and our skipper he said and he did it he, you could see all these signals he used to put up in the canteen flat so he, you knew it happened and he, he, he sent a signal back to the Admiralty that he wasn't going to be responsible for the actions of his crew uh, when we reached Portsmouth uh, be, you know, because they'd been all. I mean, we 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 were only away, oh what, eighteen months. But the, the, some of the blokes on that glory, that the, the seaside, they'd been away for three years and that. And yeah, he said, no, he, he won't be responsible for the actions of his crew. Yeah. So they were going to drop the planes off, but yeah, not the no, people. No, not but the people. This was, again, you uh, know, pump was bloody admirals and things. And then ship them up to bloody Scotland, which uh, is yeah. not uh, home to, at all. To, to, well, Lossiemouth is up there. It was a, it was an air base, you see. Yeah, and that's what they were going to, and then we'd have to come all the way, all the way back for our leave, you know. But um, as I say, they, they ironed that out, right. and so when we hit Portsmouth, we, we all had our leave tickets and, right. and all that. We had to go through customs, of course, on, on, on the way back. Uh, customs came on board, and you had to declare whatever. You know. well, I had nothing to declare. You know. Oh, I, I, I only. I, no, I don't think I just a back even. No, just, know. just on that though, you did, you did ship back. Either you shipped it back or you bought it back. When, but we, we've got things like that Japanese tea set. Um, um, Stephen's got a, a lovely Chinese vase um, that I think came from that period, um, and and other bits and pieces I I can remember. But, but, in in Japan, I'm pleased you talked about that Japanese tea set because I was thinking about that the other day. Um, yeah, you, you could go in and when you was in Japan, you, you went and bought a, a, a tea set, right? Because you look up and the, the geisha girls up. Yeah. And um, so you, you you paid for it and told them where it went and they sent it then. They sent it to your mum, right? Yeah. Now, when it got to your mum, apparently there was a broken cup. Mm. So she sent that broken cup back to me on, on board the ship. And um, so the next time I was in, I took this, the broken cup back and they gave me a, 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 another one for it. Now, it didn't have to call me, it couldn't cost me. And so it was that cup, one cup, that I bought, bought back with me uh, in, in the case. Well, I bought... A, Big case and it, and it was all oh, pajamas and all kinds of things and uh, there was this cup and loads of other stuff there was in it I forget now and I just gave I said to mum there it's all yours and whatever was in the case was hers you know and I can't remember there must have been lots of other, I think there were pajamas yeah silk pajamas and all this shit in there yes but uh, yeah I know you declared all that with the customs on the, on the way because apparently what they used to reckon and I don't know I don't get that. It, like a, a, a man of war which we, had, we were who were coming back uh, they reckon they, they could get X number of dollars or pounds in customs duties you know and because I remember uh, them saying and they didn't say it to me but apparently they, they said to one bloke look this receipt for this camera We've seen ten times today. <laughs> we don't know, <laughs> but they were passing the same. <laughs> ah, 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did say, oh, didn't want to see it again. So, but that, that's... And then, <clears throat> and that actually, from there we, we all went ashore and, and straight, they took us straight to the station and we all got this train and, and it was full of matlows. I don't think it was, I didn't think see any civvies on it. And they, cause that, they took us straight to, I think, Waterloo. And you can imagine this train pulling out, pulling out in Waterloo, the doors open, and there was this massive bloody matlows. They, whoa, all charging out. Well, straight off to the pub. <laughs> what are we trying to get, get home, eh? All right. And we was all charging that, and, and I looked up, and standing in the gate was this beautiful girl with a lovely hat on, and all gorgeous, and that was your mum. She'd come all the way up from Buckerstill, and she was stood, and, and I can remember, I often see it now, and she, and she stood out just like an angel, serious. And, and it was gorgeous. And, and all the matlow sort of rushed by it, and there she was, mine. Anyway, and I said, well, we'll get a train. No, no, we don't get a train. She'd got a taxi. She paid this taxi to come all the way up, pick us up, because this bloke came up and started picking my gear up. And I was doing, oi. No, she said, I had to hide. Yeah. I remember that. That was stuck in my mind, that. Anyway, so that, yes, we got this. We got, we got home and I got X number of weeks leave, I think, mean, Korean leave and whatever. And so what? that wasn't the end of the Navy? Oh, how, no. how long, couldn't, couldn't how, how much longer did you, were you in the in the Navy? A couple of years. Okay. Was, from, from, from there I went back to Daedalus and um, uh, there I found that I'd been rated up to be a petty officer. Um, I took the exam on the way back in Malta and, uh, and when I was looking at, at the draft notices just to, to you know, see if I was, because Daedalus was the main barracks. Right. And I was looking to see if I'd been drafted anyway. I just noticed that I was a, I was an acting electrician here, you know, <laughs> which was a petty officer, you know. So of course I had to go and, uh, and I had to rush through the to the uh, uh, oh, what the hell was the, the, what they call him the divisional officer. I had to put a request into him to see the captain, and I had to see the captain at the city admiral, right? To get rated up, and uh, anyway, I got, got to see the admiral. Went, up, went in, and he said, and I, "Bearing in mind, I hadn't saluted anybody for over two years." Eh? Yeah. Teach that man how to salute," he said. <laughs> I thought, "Why the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> and so this boat, so this chief, chief, when we went, it, we, we let, I got granted, of course, and where and this. Jocelyn came and said, what the hell do you? I said, look, I haven't saluted nobody for two years. I cried, was you in the board? What, what was you in? Army cadets? You know, and I think, oh, for Christ's sake. Anyway, we, 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 we got rated up and, and I went in the P.O.'s mess. And from there, I was, um, where did I go from there? Yeah. Actually, I've missed one lot from Fred. That's all the, you know, I can't remember them. Anyway. I eventually ended up back at Ariel, but not for a lecture uh, on, on what they call a, on Natsu, which was a, a salvage unit. So I was the electrician on this salvage unit. Oh, yeah. And this salvage unit was stationed at, at Ariel. And, and what we used to do, we used to take uh, or go and salvage aeroplanes, crashed aircraft. Uh, or transport aircraft all, all, all over the country okay. and we used to stay in the transport uh, accommodation, you know, with transport place. So uh, it, was, it was a cushy job really and <laughs> so as a, as a PO I, I would be in charge of the convoy, you know, say two or three car, uh, lorry that's in it. And um, so we, we used to go all over, the, uh, as I say, we used to travel all over and uh, well, one of them ones we had to do, I had to go across to um, to uh, the Isle of Wight, Isle of Widget. Uh, there was a crash kite there, it was a Wyvern, and the Wyvern aircraft it was uh, an all-electric aircraft. Yeah, I'm talking a bit before all these jet things come out too much, but this Wyvern was a 
all electric, you know, thing. And uh, apparently this Yankee pilot said, oh, I don't, don't want to fly one of them before I go home. So they let him fly it. Of course, the silly bastard crashed it. And um, so we had to go and salvage it. And we went over there and I found his fingers and so we found his foot and that, that was about all we did find. The rest we just chucked in the, in the rubbish. Yeah. But, uh, oh, right. So when you say he crashed it, he, he, he didn't oh, it survive. Burned, no. He didn't survive. No, no it burned. No. Okay. But the joke was on, on the way back from this, but I think we, they, we, they gave us some sandwiches, that's all. And we was all in what we call number eight working gear, you know. And, and on the way back, it, it was a hot, it was hot weather, and, and we'd had a, and, and they were coming up to a cafe, and I said to the driver, stop here, we're going in for a cup of tea, you know. And of course, we weren't allowed, oh, we mustn't go out, and, you know, the Navy. And I just said, well, well fuck the Navy, <laughs> and, and excuse me, friend. because, you know, our blokes have been through hell, salvaging this crashed aircraft, it was still hot, mm. you know, uh, and we found these bits of body and all this rubbish, and and, and, it, and it was all um, sort of ash and all that. And so we was in the hell of a state, really. And but they were dying for a cup of, of thirst. And I thought, no, I'm the bloody petty officer in charge, and that's my 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 call. Mm. And so I, I thought, well, if, if anybody any come back, but you no know, solid. That, that's what I've done. Anyway, there's no comeback. We, we was all right. It was good. Yeah, so anyway, so we was on this crash unit and um, then I got into married quarters here and, and that's when your mum came. And so we lived in this married quarters and, and this particular time I was duty PO of the Nats Nats and and uh, it was a weekend so I was duty PO there. So, uh, I decided that I'd shoot off home to dinner, <coughs> which all their chiefs and POs, actually some of them used to go out over for the weekend and get out of it, but I know went home for dinner. Next thing I know, this bloody jeep pulls up and I sort of watch wants to see me, you know, oh Jesus. So I saw the officer watch and he's one of these it, it, again, in my day, it, it, towards the end, it, this is w what really got me out of the Navy. These blokes come out from university and all that and got bloody made up to lieutenants and, mm -hmm. straight away, uh, and especially schoolmasters, you know. Nice. Uh, and they gave them a couple of rings and, and they had no idea about the bloody Navy, you know. Anyway, this bloody idiot had a go at me. And the story was that one of the drivers... Um, had got, 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 went, gone out with a load or something to the docks and the docks was closed so he, he didn't know what to do but now he knew what to do what he had to do was to bloody park up and wait for Monday to the home I mean that, that, that was the norm eh? all he had to do was get in digs and he'd have a good run of shore but no, 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 no he had to phone up the barrack because so they phoned up and I said they phoned up that's it. now I also had a boy up there, and what one of the ladies, uh, you know, he's supposed to have been doing all it, it, So he didn't answer the bloody phone. So nobody answered the phone. They piped for the duty of petty officer. Now, where was it? Oh, he wasn't here. Anyway, some totals I got done. And uh, I, I got put on captains, and they charged me with desertion. Desertion, would you mind? Um, desertion, absent from the place of duty, of course, and of course, conduct, prejudice, and good order, and able to do That was the three, yeah. And um, so, this captain in his, you know, when I went up before them, and I said, to, I just went home to dinner, you know, just as if my wife was like. Of course, there had been a, a burglary in the head. They were had a burglary gun. I'd had me watch nicked from uh, a few a week or so before. So I said, I just went home to dinner. And, and I said, because there'd been a burglary. And this air commander, I heard nothing about burglaries. You know, I said, see, they are pigs, I told you. 
I thought, there's no point in arguing with the bugger. So anyway, he found me not guilty of desertion, but he did find me guilty of absence from the place of duty and uh, conduct produced good order. Interesting. And so I had to. Look, I lost a badge, my, you know, a good conduct badge. Um, that was just the equivalent of seven day cells, by the way. So, uh, so I lost the badge, and I got two days stoppage of leave, two days stoppage of pay. Yeah. So yeah, that was some sort of, that's why your dad's a convict. <laughs> but I, they gave me my conduct badge back when I left. Oh, okay. That, you know, in my documents you'll see that it was restored. Oh, me. okay. But, um, yeah, and that was, that was another reason I've gone out in the Navy, was because you've got these bloody idiots, uh, well, it's like, like the one the police, the one they said these fast-tracked inspectors and all this, they, they don't know what it's like, you know. And it's like this bloody idiot of a... Of a sort of, I'd been abroad for two years, for Christ's sake, away from my wife and all that. And so you, you want every little tiny bit. Because also the bloke that was should have been a boy, that should have been in the, you know, uh, up there in the in the hangar, he should have been there, not chasing bleeding rabbits. Mm. Well, he got, I think he got seven days, 11s or something. But... Uh, because I was paraded before the whole bloody ship's company off caps and all this shit, yeah. So there you are, that's, that's where your convict of a husband <laughs> come from. All right, so... I've got to tell you, tell, tell you this story. Go on, I must tell you this. At the time, I had a dog called Fritz. It was a boxer, big, big old boxer. And... Um, Fritz got, got out somehow, I don't know, after this lot. And he found his way up to where they were playing hockey. The, um, the, all the pigs were playing hockey. And this I'm told by one of the chiefs that was up there. He, Fritz went and sniffed all these clothes and he found this little pile of clothes and he pissed all over it. <laughs> and you know who they belonged to? <laughs> Hopefully. It did. The officer, the officer, the watch that stuck me on, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So where did you go from the Navy? Just, to, you know, to sort of don't start that story, but just where, where did, yeah, when, when, you, when you left the Navy and you took off your uniform and, you know, did you, was that when you became a copper? No, no, yeah, of course, no. No, we, uh, I don't, I did a milkman's job for a while, but I, I didn't, couldn't keep pace with that, uh, with the United Dairies, that's, and that's where I learned to drive, on that electric, oh, <laughs> on okay. electric thing, yeah. And um, I did that for a wee while, but I, I, don't, I just couldn't sort of cope. Uh, and, and then I went in partnership with my brother on a farmlet in Cornwall. Right. Uh, but, but sort of bearing in mind that I was thinking I was going to get paid from the Navy, going to get a pension from the Navy, you yeah. see. But they paid me once, one, and then I got a letter from them to say that they'd taken me off that reserve, that paid reserve, so I wouldn't get any more money, but they put me on another reserve, I reckon which we, didn't get paid. I reckon we should hire a lawyer in England and backdate this because well, I reckon you've been done. Well, I have, they did it. I mean, and now if I'd have said to them, look, fuck it, I don't want to be here for seven <laughs> years, I want to go somewhere, they would have put me inside. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that was, and I was relying on that money. So yeah. That's why we took this little farm way out in the Wops in Cornwall. Yeah. And, and, and we started to you know, breed chickens and you know, bring up young, young pullets. And then my brother, his partner's wife died. And, and actually, and that's when your mum was pregnant with, with Stephen and my brother wasn't very happy about her being pregnant. You know? So anyway, they decided they'd go back to Liscard and they left me and your mum all there. And in the end, I said, no, I said, this is no good. And I got a friend, Morris, he came out and he picked us up and put our goats in the, in the back of the... The, 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 his, his big old lorry and whatever other rubbish we had and I said to the house agent sell it I don't want no debts just 
get rid of it. Yeah. And uh, so that's apparently what he did, because I've never had a bill from him. And um, but we, we, so Fred Morris sort of took us back to his place. Cause I, so I'm bearing in mind I've got two dogs and half a dozen goats and whatever. And there was all in this story. And in those days, there was an order out about foot and mouth disease, about moving animals yeah. to stop. You had to have special permission. Right? And lo and behold, we got stopped, didn't we, by the bloody police. And, and uh, of course, Fred Morris could talk his way out of it. it was, and of course, these goats are in the back. And, <laughs> and I thought, oh, Jesus. But anyway, we, we, nothing happened. <laughs> we got home. Oh, I tell you. So, uh, no, I've got a job on a farm. That's right, at um, Basingstoke. And it was in this farm, in the farmhouse, we one. And um, I was looking after pigmen, pigs and, and stuff like that. Basically, I was a pigman there. But they also had a, a big area we had, but I think a thousand odd chicken, chickens and, uh, with straw, and I used to feed them and collect the eggs and all this rubbish. And um, so, what's his name? Anyway, I, I remember one day, you, 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 your brother was born in those days, and he, we had him in a pram just outside the, there was a wall there, and this was our garden, and he was there. And this was a gentleman's farm, eh? you know, bloody idiots were chasing hares or something. And this bloody idiot with his horn over the fence, boo boo, you know, calling his bleeding dogs, because I, I was not amused again, you know. Um, and I explained the facts of life to him and his mates. Uh, but they, they used to have these big shoots, you know. So what I used to do, if I knew they were going to have a shoot on a weekend, I used to go out on the Friday night with my gun. <laughs> yeah, well, I was a, and scare everything away. I was a nasty boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. I used to do that. To <laughs> <laughs> but I was not, and I tell you, when I, got, I sort of joined, I tried to join the Met, and the Met wouldn't have me at first because they, of, of my lungs, you know, I, I had to go to a TB hospital to, to get my lungs checked out, and I knew there was nothing wrong because I'd been in the blasted Navy, you know, but I have scarred lungs at the bottom, and that's what okay. they, also what they queried, and apparently these lungs were scarred because, and I believe, that my dad kicked my mum down the stairs when I was born. And um, I was rushed off to St Thomas's Hospital okay. with my mum. And it was, that's why I'm called Arnold. Apparently Dr Arnold saved my life or something. He resuscitated me. Anyway, so I've got these damaged lungs out there. So the, the Met at one time wouldn't take me, but then they decided they would. So in the interim, I tried to join the Hampshire Police. And I had to go for this test, for the educational test. And I, I don't know if your brother remembers this. I sat in this little office. Your mum sat there. And where did your brother sit? On my bloody lap. And I got him on my lap. And I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm doing this exam paper. Yeah, God. Yeah. But uh, they, they, they said them, they wouldn't take me. They reckon the Met had. Then the Met decided they'd take me. And so the Hampshire police wouldn't take me because they reckon the Met had first um, first grab. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's why I joined the Met. Okay. Mm. Oh, we'll pick that up um, another another time. I want to revisit the farm farm years. There's more to more to tell on that. A lot more. Yeah. And some I'm not going to tell you in front of that. <laughs> All right then. Here we go.